بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته So today inshallah ta'ala we are covering the name of Allah Al-Halim Al-Halim which can be translated as the forbearing Hilm is to be patient while maintaining a sense of serenity and lenience This is contrasted with the concept of Sabr which is also to be patient but it's while exercising self-restraint So in other words sometimes a person is being uh, uh, is exercising sabr, he's being a sabir. And what that means is that he's exercising patience, but on the inside you could, you could tell that the person is maybe boiling. But they're trying to keep a cool head, they're trying to be, you know, take it easy. And that's sabr, the, the frustration, the pain, the difficulty is, is kind of bubbling up on the inside, but they're, 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 they're locking it down. Whereas hilm is what? That something bad happens, but not only do you show that you're calm, but even on the inside you MashaAllah, I guess you've exercised so much sabr that you've, uh, you know, elevated and got a, a level upgrade to what? To hilm. That SubhanAllah, even deep on the inside, you can say, you know what? I can be calm in this situation. And that is to exercise hilm. Uh, 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 the word hilm, hilm means what? Patience, perseverance, deliberateness, balance, uh, balance, judgment. This is all, these are all the meanings. What does this imply? This implies that Allah Ta'ala does not rush to judgment. That Allah Ta'ala will not be provoked by the wickedness of the evil people. Uh, uh, to, uh, he will not be provoked or be uh, goaded into doing something that is unwise or hasty. Allah Ta'ala has a plan for everything and will not be pushed off course. Allah Ta'ala isn't uh, uh, diminished by the ignorance of the ignorant. This is all implied by Al-Halim. That Al-Halim implies as well uh, the one who does not withhold his gifts and his blessings from his slaves, from his ibad, because of their sins. SubhanAllah, think of how many sins we've all committed, how much evil we've done, and yet the blessings keep coming. You can keep, keep taking the next breath. You still have fridge, uh, you still have food in the fridge. You still have, mashallah, blessings all around you. Things still work for you. You can still see, you can still hear, the heart keeps beating, etc., etc. All these blessings, even while you're doing something evil and sinful. Why? Because Allah Ta'ala is Al Halim. Uh, he provides for the disobedient as well as the righteous. SubhanAllah, Allah Ta'ala is indeed forbearing. And this is a name of Allah, Al Halim, which occurs 11 times in the Quran. Uh, six times next to Ghafoor. And it can be in both orders. It could be Al Ghafoor Al Halim or Al Halim Al Ghafoor. Uh, al Ghafoor meaning the all forgiving. And the impl implication here is what? That Allah Ta'ala is so patient with his slaves and he accepts their repentance even if it took a while to repent and even if the sin was huge. So SubhanAllah, this is how forgiving Allah Ta'ala is. If you did a sin that's very, very big, Allah is Ghafoor, the one who forgives even huge sins. And even if it took you a long time to finally turn around and say, okay, now I'm going to repent, maybe 10 years after doing that evil, 20 years, whatever the case is, Allah was what? Al Halim. And is Allah is always Al Halim, the one who was forbearing and uh, therefore allowing you, giving you more time until you repented. Another one, uh, another combination you find three times in the Quran is what? Al Alim Al Halim. Al Alim Al Halim. Al Alim meaning the all knowing and Al Halim the forbearing. So the, implica the implication here is what? You always find that people who have little bits of knowledge, people who are, you know, let's say less knowledgeable, the moment that they have the chance to show a little bit of their knowledge, they get excited to do so. Does anybody know the answer? I know the answer. Somebody is, oh, I can't really remember. I know, I remember, right? People with a little bit of knowledge, they always want to show off their knowledge. They're excited to prove to the world that they know something. However, those with deep, deep knowledge, they know that it's better to allow the person who's struggling to figure it out on their, on their own, right? Give them a chance to figure it out in their own way. That way, it'll be something more meaningful to them. That way, they will develop and become better. So this is the combination of Allah being Al-Alim. He has deep knowledge. And therefore, instead of being you know, rushing and trying to show, I know, I know, no, Allah Ta'ala is Al-Halim. He's patient, he allows people to figure things out on their own, so when they learn on their own, that knowledge becomes theirs and something that they can benefit from, inshallah Ta'ala. Furthermore, Allah Ta'ala is so knowledgeable that he knows that some people, they need time. They need time to arrive at their own truth, to, to, to arrive at the truth of themselves, I should say. And, uh, uh, which is why Allah Ta'ala doesn't punish immediately. And furthermore, a disbeliever might think that, hey, I, uh, you know, I'm not being punished for my sins. Maybe God doesn't know. Maybe God doesn't know. No, Allah Ta'ala is saying, no, I'm fully aware of the evil things you do. I'm Al-Alim. I'm fully aware of what you've done. The, I ha the reason I haven't punished you isn't because I'm ignorant. The reason I haven't punished you is because I am Halim. So the, hence, Al-Alim, Al-Halim, both of them come together to let you know that Allah Ta'ala is forbearing. That's the reason why you haven't been punished yet for your sin. Furthermore, Allah Ta'ala is Al-Ghani, Al-Halim, which occurs once in the Quran, once in Surah Baqarah, Ayah 263, which means what? Al-Ghani, meaning the one who is self-sufficient, doesn't need anything. He's rich. He's the most rich. And Allah Ta'ala is Al-Halim, the forbearing. See, Allah Ta'ala uh, isn't patient with his 
uh, uh, slaves because he lacks the resources to take them to account. See, somebody might think that, oh, Allah didn't punish this person because Allah lacks the resources. Allah is saying, I'm, I'm a ghani, I am rich, I have all resources. The only reason I'm not taking punishment right away is what? I am halim as well. And furthermore, Allah Ta'ala has no need to take immediate retribution because he is infinitely rich and he has no need of anything. In fact, you usually find that it's people that are quite petty when they have some money and they say, hey, oh, now is the time I can take advantage of this wealth and fight back and, you know, uh, uh, you know harm the people that have harmed me or, 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 you know, attack my enemies or whatever the case is immediately. Uh, this is people that have this, you know, you could say inferiority complex or people that are very hasty or immature. Whereas Allah Ta'ala is al-ghani. He has all the resources and could easily uh, punish those who do wrong, those who are uh, wicked and evil. And yet, subhanAllah, Allah Ta'ala is also Halim. And this is why they are given time. And of course, another one is uh, Ash-Shakur Al-Halim. That Allah is Shakur. That He's appreciative and Halim. He is forbearing. Why do these two come together? Well, one reason is because Allah's appreci Allah, uh, Allah Ta'ala's appreciation for a servant's goodness helps us to understand why He would be forbearing when a servant uh, uh, sins and why he would not uh, take them to account immediately. So the idea is that, look, I am so appreciative. Allah is a, sh a shakur. He is so appreciative of when you do good that he's willing to give you time and be patient with you and forbearing with you so that you can arrive at the truth and repent uh, when you are ready to. And so how should we implement this? Well, first and foremost, we should try to be forbearing ourselves and we should always try to do good, even uh, in response to the evil that others do towards us. As Allah says, idfa'a billatihi ahsan. Allah says, repel evil by that which that deed which is better. Somebody does evil to you, you feel that someone has done wrong to you, you should respond with that which is better. You should respond with goodness, inshallah ta'ala. Yes. And you should always remember that that person is on their own journey. And it could be the case that that person is at a point in their journey where yes, they're doing evil towards you, but who knows, maybe they will improve, they will repent, they will learn from their mistakes. Maybe there's going to come a day where they far exceed you in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe they will improve and become so great that they outrank you in paradise. SubhanAllah, you don't know, sometimes people repent such a great repentance and, and turn around their lives. So you don't want to be so harsh upon someone and uh, try to burn bridges with somebody when who knows, they may turn it all around and become even better than you. We should remember that the Prophet said to one of his companions, uh, Ashaj Abdul Qais radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said to him, Inna fika khasratain yuhibbuhum, yuhibbuhum Allah. Al-hilm wal anah that you possess two qualities which are beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are forbearance and composure. So this is something that, that the Prophet is saying Allah loves these qualities. So we should either have these qualities or be working to develop these qualities. What are they? Be a forbe have forbearance, calm, cool, collected, and composure. Make sure that even in the worst of circumstances, you don't lose your cool. Uh, uh, you know, you always have a calm uh, mind about you. We should remember this uh, beautiful story about the Prophet ﷺ where بَيْنَمَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ جَالِسٌ وَمَعَهُ أَصْحَابُهُ وَقَعَ رَجُلٌ بِأَبِي بَكْرٍ فَآذَاهُ فَصَمَتَ عَنْهُ أَبُو بَكْرٍ That there once was the Prophet ﷺ, he was sitting with his companions and uh, a man came and started insulting Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr عَنْهُ He was silent, he didn't say anything. ثُمَّ أَذَاهُ الثَّانِيَةَ فَصَمَتَ عَنْهُ أَبُو بَكْرٍ ثُمَّ أَذَاهُ الثَّالِثَةَ فَانْتَصَرَ مِنْهُ أَبُو بَكْرٍ So the guy started insulting him a second time, Abu Bakr still remained quiet. The guy started insulting him a third to Abu Bakr a third time, and then he took revenge. Then he responded to him and insulted back. فَقَامَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ حِينَ إِنْتَصَرَ أَبُو بَكْرٍ So then the Prophet got up when Abu Bakr insulted the guy back. فَقَالَ أَبُو بَكْرٍ So then Abu Bakr was concerned about that. He said in response, أَوَجَدْتَ عَلَيَّ Did you find something wrong with me, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Uh, ya Rasulullah, and then he, the Prophet responds, Nazala Malakun min as bima qala lak, that there was an angel that uh, came down and that was denying the things that he was saying about you. So the angel was speaking on your behalf and defending you. Falamma intasarta, but then when you uh, took revenge or started speaking on your own behalf and started attacking the guy back, waqa uh, shaytan, falam akun li ajlisa id waqa shaytan, that, uh, but then. You insulted the guy back, and so a shaitan came and, uh, uh, you know, became present and, and, and came in, in, in the majlis, in the, in the seating area. And I don't like to sit when shaitan start to gather. I don't like this, uh, this type. It's not good for me to be in this type of environment. SubhanAllah, the way I imagine it, you can imagine these shaitan, obviously they're in a realm that is different than our own. Uh, you know, we can't see them, interact with them, but you can imagine it's like, uh, you know, like in the ocean when somebody drops a drop of blood and, you know, all the, the sharks, even though they're very hard to see in the ocean, they're very stealth. You can imagine them, they can smell blood from like miles away, right? Well, that's, that's what they say. So they immediately smell it and you know, they, they seek out and they start to circle around, they start to get close to that gathering. SubhanAllah, this is the way shayateen are. They hear 
hear one person insult, another person insult back, back, forth, back, forth. Things start to get heated and what's happening in the unseen realm, it's like these shayateen are swimming around us uh, like, like sharks are attracted to blood, subhanAllah. And so the Prophet was like, oh, no, I, I, can't, I can't be in a place like this. I'd rather be where the angels are defending, subhanAllah. So uh, this just goes to show that yes, of course, we're not doormats in Islam. We're not people that just anybody can walk all over us and that we just uh, take abuse. But at the same time, you don't want to go overboard. You don't want to sink down to their level. As they say, when a dog barks, you don't bark back, so on and so forth. And finally, I want to mention uh, uh, that uh, we should remember the dua that the Prophet taught us including the name of Allah Al-Halim. This is uh, mentioned by Ibn Abbas al who He says, Anna Rasulullah uh, كان يقول عند الكرب, that during hardship, the Prophet would often make this dua, لا إله إلا الله العظيم الحليم. Uh, 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 لا إله إلا الله رب العرش العظيم. لا إله إلا الله رب السماوات ورب الأرض ورب العرش الكريم. That uh, there is no God but Allah, the magnificent, the forbearing. The forbearing. That's the one I want to highlight. There is no God but Allah, the Lord of the great throne. There is no God but Allah, the Lord of the heavens and the earth and the Lord of the noble throne. So subhanAllah, this is a very beautiful, beautiful dua that the Prophet would mention over and over again, reminding himself of the greatness of Allah Ta'ala, how Allah Ta'ala has power and strength over everything and uh, humbling himself before Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's greatness in times of difficulty. Uh, so with that, I close. May Allah Ta'ala make us of those who are forbearing, patient. We don't allow the ignorance of ignorant people to push us off course uh, and bring the worst out of us, make us ugly, make us stoop down to their level. May Allah Ta'ala make us of those who are patient, forbearing, persistent in seeking good and conveying the truth in the most beautiful way. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. Zakul Khair. Wassalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.